Today, we're creating a simple Notion expense tracker. We are going to have the list view, which tells us the full amount, when we can fill out the date of purchase, the amount that we spent, and the category that it fits into. Then we can also see that information as a calendar. So here you can see I bought groceries and coffee yesterday and I bought two coffees today. Then I have the category where I can see how much I've spent in each category. So groceries, $100, rent, 500, takeaway, 24. And then lastly, we have the chart where it's breaking down how much I've spent on my expenses, not including rent because rent is a fixed expense. Speaking of, we've created the rent button. So if I click that, as you can see, the rent automatically gets added into this list. Plus, we've also created a recurring option where rent gets automatically added into my expenses every single week. If you find this helpful, please subscribe and let's get into how to build an expense tracker in Notion. All right, so let's start building. The first thing we are going to need is a database. So we're going to do forward slash data and here we're going to click on table view. Then we are going to click on new table. So what we want here is a list of all of our expenses. And we're going to see this later as not just a table view, but also in the different forms formats being the chart and the calendar. So here we can just write random expense. Actually, let's do rent, groceries, coffee. All right, there are some expenses. Then here under tags, if you don't see this, I'm just going to delete this property, but we're going to click on the plus. And then here, what we're going to do is click on select. Now this select is going to be the category. So I'll write category. And then here you can add all of the different categories that you have. So rent, groceries, takeaway. And obviously you can add as many categories as you want, bills, blah, blah, blah. So we have the name, we have the category, and now we are going to want to know the amount. So we'll click on the plus, and then here we will select the number property. And we can call this amount or cost or whatever you wanna call it. Now the last thing is when we purchase this. So we're going to click on the plus, and then here we will click on the date property. This one's pretty easy. And then I like to have the date property on the very left like that. Now what I'll do is just make this full screen like that. All right, so we have the date, we have the name, we have the amount, and we have the category. So now what I wanna do, let's say I pay the rent today, and then let's say I bought groceries yesterday, and I bought a coffee today. What I wanna do now is see all of this information in a few different views. The first view is as a calendar. So I'm going to right click on table and do duplicate. And then here we will change the layout from table to calendar. So now as you can see, I can see groceries, rent, and coffee. Now let's say I don't wanna to have to click on coffee in order to see it was $7, for example, rent $500. Let's say I don't want to click on these in order to see that information, but I just wanna see it here in the calendar. What I'll do is click on these three dots. I'll click on properties. By clicking on this eyeball, I can say which ones I want to see. So I want to see the amount. So now you can see the 500 and I want to see the category. Now let's say I want the category above the number. What I can do here is use these six dots and just drag it above now, as you can see, it is swapped around. So I can add here directly in here, a new expense. So let's say today I bought a second coffee. I'll just do takeaway $7. There we go. So I have coffee twice today. It will also appear in my table here. And I can rename this from table to calendar. These two here are the same information just being shown to me in a different view. So here I see it as a calendar and here I see it as a list. Now what I can do is click on down here, the calculate, do more options and do some. So now I can see my total expenses. But this isn't very useful to me because it's just all of my expenses throughout my life. I want to see this broken down by category. So what we'll do is right click on table again. And this here is going to be category. And we can even change the icon by clicking on this. And let's say we'll do the donut. And we're actually going to keep it as a list view. However, we will be using groups. So in Notion, there's three main features for databases that we use filters, sorting, and groups. So I'll click on group here, and I'm going to say I want to group these by the category. I could also group these by the date, for example, and then I'll see it September 2, September 3. But knowing my daily expense isn't as useful as seeing it broken down by category. And as you can see, I get the sum for each category. So takeaway is $14. What I can also do instead of sum is, let's say I buy another coffee today. Let's say it was a really difficult day today and this one was $10. Let's say I track my coffee purchases for a few weeks and I want to know what's the average amount that I'm spending on coffee. Well, instead of having sum, we can change it to average. So now I see my average coffee order 
is $8. This would be quite useful for stuff like takeaway, groceries, and other stuff that fluctuates and isn't fixed like rent, for example. Sorry to interrupt, I do have a course all about how to use Notion for productivity, and that's actual productivity, not faking productivity like most people are doing. If you wanna learn how to do that, then click on the link in the description. Depending on when you're seeing this, it's either the waitlist or the course is live. Like I said, this course is only for people who genuinely want to be more productive, not the people who spend their day pretending to be busy. But I will change this back here to sum. Now the last thing that I wanna do is actually see this information here not as just a list view, but as a chart. So if you haven't seen, Notion has a new update where you can view stuff as a chart and you don't need a third party plugin in order to do this. So I'll call this chart. And here I'll click on layout. And as you can see, charts will appear here. Now, if you have a free account, you're going to see this. Your workspace has already used its one free chart. Now this is my build tutorial Notion account. So that's why I'm seeing this. In my personal account, I do have a paid plan. So I just deleted that other chart so I can show you how this works. So charts in Notion are really, really powerful. And here you can see I'm seeing groceries one, rent one, takeaway three. So this is the amount of times I've purchased. Now this isn't very useful to me. So what we're going to do is click on these three dots here. Now here I can play with the chart settings. So I could say, oh, I wanna see this as a vertical bar. I could say, I wanna see this horizontal. I can see this as a line graph. Or in this case, I wanna see this as a donut chart. So now I can see five total expenses. So I've spent money five times. Again, this is still not very useful to me. So here, what we're doing is show me category. And that is what I want actually. So I could be saying, show me date. So then I could say the day on September 3rd, I spent money four times. Again, not very useful to me. So I'm going to stick with category here. Now here you can say each slice represents count. So I don't want it to count it. I want it to say the amount. And here I could say, do I want it to be the average like we were looking at before or the minimum or the maximum, blah, blah, blah. I want to see this as the sum. So now I can see here rent 500, groceries as 100. And this last one here, takeaway being 24. So this is helping me a lot more. Now let's say your rent, for example, is fixed. You can't change this, but you can change your groceries and your takeaway expenses. So let's say I don't wanna see rent here. Well, what I could do is click on the three dots again. And here we can use a filter. Like I was saying, filters is one of the big things that we can use in Notion databases. And here I'm going to filter by the category. So right now we have no filters. And let's say I do not want to see where the category is not rent. So now the rent has been removed from here and I'm only seeing groceries and takeaway. So this helps me to know where my money is going on the stuff that is in my fixed expenses. Now, speaking of rent, that is something I have to pay sadly quite often. So what I'll do here is do forward slash button and click on button here. What we can do to make it simple, because you're going to be paying rent quite often, is do one of two things. You either create a button or we can create a recurring task. So I'll show you the first option. We will say rent. I will add a house icon. That makes sense. And what I'm saying here is when the button is clicked, add an action. And the action that I want here is to add a page to, and now it's going to say, which database do you want to add it to? And it's going to be the expenses database. If you're not seeing it here in your recents, you can just search for it. So I'll say expenses. And the name here is going to be rent. And I also want to add another property. And the property will be the category. And I want it auto selected as rent. And then obviously we want to add the amount. So the amount will be $500. Now, normally, if we're journaling or something like that, we would add another step here saying open page. Or in headquarters, for example, I have the quick buttons for adding tasks, adding notes and adding resources. So we would do open page there, but we don't need that for rent. We just need it to, when I click on this, to add it to this list here. So I can just say done. So now, as you can see, we only have the one rent here, but if I click on the button, it got added straight in here. Now, as you can see, I actually made a mistake here. It hasn't added the date. So now I would have to manually click that in and we don't want to do that. That was an accident. I was meant to do that, but I can show you how to edit the button. So now this rent, we don't have to create a new one. If you actually hover over it, you'll see this little gear icon, which is to edit the button. So now we can add another property, add date. We can say now or today. So I'll say today and now click on done. So now when I click on rent, as you can see, it got added September 3rd rent. $500 rent. Now that is one way to do it. Another way we could do it is recurring tasks. So if I click on the down arrow here, we could add a template. And this template here would be rent. I would say the amount is $500. I would say the category is rent. 
and the date is today. So now I have this rent template here. And of course, yes, we can add an icon as well. We'll do the house again. So now if I want this to be recurring, what I can do is click on these three dots here and say repeat. And now I can say, do I want it daily? Do I want it weekly? Do I want it monthly? And here, if I say weekly, I can say when I want it to be repeated. So for example, I could say once per week on Tuesday. And then we would have created rent being a recurring payment. So most likely these buttons that you have up here will be stuff that isn't recurring. For example, maybe coffee and you know your order is $7, but you don't buy it every single day. Then you can create that or now you know how to edit the button. If you wanna see how buttons can be used for stuff like journaling, creating tasks, adding notes and adding resources, then click on my headquarters tour here where you can see my all-in-one productivity system. Thank you so much for watching.